Hi everyone, this is Kyle Bader, uh, architect out of the Storage BU. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a demo of Presto on OpenShift with OpenShift Container Storage 4. Uh, Presto is a MPP engine, so a massively parallel processing engine that accepts ANSI SQL and um, it doesn't actually have its own data storage engine. So instead, it has a variety of different connectors so that it can query data in situ, right? So where the data lives, you don't have to copy data into, into Presto in order to, to derive insight from that data. Um, and uh, there's really a, a, a wide variety of different uh, connectors that are available, right? So whether or not, whether you're going to query data in a, a Ceph or Amazon S3 based data lake, or if you have some, let's say you have a AMQ streams, Kafka cluster you want to pull some data out of, or a MongoDB instance, or even just kind of a relational database, whether it be a, like an open source variant like MySQL or Postgres, or if you have kind of a more enterprise-y like Microsoft SQL Server database that you want to pull data out of, there are connectors uh, that have you covered for Presto. Um, now, of course, you can interact with Presto via the CLI, um, but some folks would, would much rather um, use kind of a, a, a more uh, sophisticated kind of data visualization tool like Tableau or MicroStrategy or Superset, and all those are available. You can you know, kind of connect over an ODBC connection to a Presto cluster. Uh, the Presto community is pretty vibrant, right? So um, it's used by a number of very large practitioners. You see, we have the like the Airbnbs and the Netflix and the the Lyfts or the Nasdaqs or the Finras, right? That are you know using using uh, Presto at scale. But you also have folks like you know Amazon who are uh, have you know created a managed service based on Presto's technology. So uh, the Amazon Athena. Um, service is uh, using Presto behind the scenes, and then it's also used by a number of different, uh, you know, Red Hat customers and partners, which is uh, uh, always interesting as well. So why Presto? I mean, it's a it's a community-driven open source project, right? So uh, they're uh, uh, open source brethren. Um, there's this uh, separation of compute and storage that I was talking about. So because compute and storage are separate. Um, you can you, you can scale you can scale the compute very easily, right? There's um, you know there's no data that has to be reshuffled. Um, the data is in situ in a variety of different data sources, so you don't have to pull it in. Uh, you don't have to ETL it into uh, like a, a Presto storage engine in order to make use of it. Um, it's super high performance. Um, it's you know there's those practitioners that have have clusters that number into the thousands, right? And uh, it's very fast. Um, and then because it's not tied to a Hadoop vendor or a particular storage vendor or, uh, you know, a cloud vendor, right? You can run it anywhere, you can run it on anybody's cloud, you can run it on premises. Um, it's, it's a technology that is not associated with any sort of lock-in, which kind of really resonates with the, the, the OpenShift, OpenShift story, right? You can use Presto anywhere you have OpenShift, which is in any cloud, uh, hybrid cloud, you know, on-premise, well, whichever. So recently, we've been doing some work with Starburst. Starburst is a company that um, has a number of uh, core contributors to the Presto upstream community. Um, they provide a downstream distribution um, for, uh, you know, enterprises that want uh, uh, paid support and services around Presto, um, and they have made a number of significant contributions to the upstream community um, that have helped in areas of, you know, from security to performance um, to kind of just like syntactical improvements. Now, the most recent contribution that we have um, uh, kind of done in conjunction with Starburst was making available an operator uh, in the OpenShift catalog. So if you go to the catalog, the big data section of a catalog in an OpenShift 4.2 cluster, you'll see that there's an option to deploy a, a Presto operator through uh, the OLM, and uh, that will add custom resource definitions to your Kubernetes cluster so that you can 
declaratively define some custom resources that will um, result in a Presto cluster. Now a Presto cluster is going to be composed of a number of parts. You'll have the coordinator, which is going to receive the queries, plan them out, and then distribute the, um, the tasks to a number of workers. Um, those workers are going to source the data um, from the variety of different data sources, shuff, do any sort of shuffling and filtering as necessary for the query. And um, there's also a auto scaling component, right? So if the query load is high, additional Presto pods can be automatically provisioned. Um, and then finally, there's the Metastore service. Um, in a lot of cases, like in data lake use cases, the data um, is not necessarily stored in conjunction with the schema. And so this Metastore service gives you a, a, a separate place where you can store um, the schema for your particular tables. Now in this demo, um, part of our data is going to be stored in a Ceph object store. Um, and so we're going to be using the Hive connector to access that data. So in the, the configuration for the Hive connector, um, you would provide your endpoint your, and then your uh, credentials, right? Your access key, your secret key. And then we have our schema definition, right? So you can think of a schema as like a database, right? So it's like create schema or create database in the Hive catalog, um, this particular schema, we're gonna call S3 export, right? And then you provide a location, right? So whether the data is located here or if you want um, to create a new table and uh, because you're gonna insert, um, then the new data will be stored here inside this database. Um, once you've created that database or schema, that you can create tables um, within that schema or database. And um, for each table that you create, you can specify um, a particular format. So you could say, you know, store this data as CSV or it's already stored as CSV or uh, store it as ORC or Parquet if you wanted to use kind of a, a compressed, efficient columnar format. Um, and then in this way, you can define schema for data that already exists in the object store or you can define schema um, where you'd like to put data, right? So Presto is not just a read-only tool, it's a read and write tool, and combined with the variety of different connectors, in addition to being used for data discovery, it can also be useful for, or uh, in addition to discovery and analytics, you can also use it to kind of move data around, right? So if uh, you want to pull data out of a relational database and store it into the object store, or if you want to pull it out of an older data lake, like a HDFS-based data lake, and you want to move it into an object store, right? You're trying to move to a more cloud-style approach. Um, you can go. You can use Presto as a tool to do that. Now this is a high-level diagram of what we're going to show here in this demo. So we have uh, this particular SQL query that's going to join data. Um, this data is going to be a, a TPCDS data set. Um, we're interacting with two different tables of that TPCDS data set, the orders table and the customer table. Uh, the customer table and the, many of the other tables are going to be stored in, the posts, uh, in a Postgres database. That Postgres database is going to be sitting on top of a RWOPV, which is provided by the Redis block device from OpenShift Container Storage. And then we have the orders table, which is stored as Parquet files inside uh, the Ceph object store. So those will be accessed by the Hive connector over the S3 API, uh, which is going to be talking to the, the Ceph Rados gateway. So without further ado, uh, we can kind of go OC status here and see the Presto cluster that's been uh, pre-provisioned so that we didn't have to walk through the provisioning. And then we can um, uh, RSH into uh, the coordinator here. All right, and then we can go Presto CLI. All right, so if you've ever used a MySQL or a Postgres shell, um, you'll be right at home here at the Presto CLI. We can go show catalogs here. We'll see, we see we have the, the Hive and the Postgres catalog. 
And then we can go show schemas from Hive. And we can do the same for plural. Right, and the public. So we have the, the public schema and the Postgres um, catalog. And then we have the Ceph schema in the Hive catalog. So we can show the tables in each of those. The Ceph, the Ceph one right here. Um, okay, there's our orders table that we're going to use for the query. SQL.public. And then here's the rest of the Postgres tables right here. So this is the customer table that we're going to interact with. And go ahead. And so what we have here is we're selecting the market segment. Um, we're going to count the, the matches that we have uh, from the orders table in the uh, Ceph schema in the, the, the Hive catalog and then join it with the Postgres uh, customer table. Um, and then we're gonna sort it by those that have an account balance over a thousand and then group them by market segment. Boom, uh, like I said, Presto is pretty fast. So we just, we just query just under 2 million rows here um, and then return the results. So these are the top market segments. Um, well, I guess it's not sorted, but these are the, uh, uh, the, the market segments that have the balances over a thousand and uh, that's uh, that's this demo here thank you